This is Professor Amar Jamil. I am going to discuss with you how to conceive a research idea and select your research topic and how to organize your data. And this is very important before you go for any synopsis, research thesis or any kind of research project or writing some report. Now obviously there is a first question that comes in mind why we want to do research. There may be many answers to this question but to me there are two broad categories due to which we do the research. Either you're doing it in some research project or you are doing it for your MPhil or PhD studies. Uh, the first one is the inbuilt curiosity in the human beings to explore nature and second is to get comforts of life. So these are the two broad categories due to which we do all types of research. And you know the life is short but this knowledge is unlimited. So we may get frustrated that in this short period of life uh, how can we achieve this knowledge which is unlimited. So but the brighter side of it is that you can play your role to achieve overall objective uh, of your life and you can do this in the best way to do the research. That's why we have divided uh, this nature into different subjects and the knowledge is uh, so unlimited that even for a single human body you need all different kinds of uh, specialist doctors like uh, heart surgeon. Uh, he cannot uh, give any advice on uh, uh, ENT and similarly a liver specialist is different than the eye specialist and so is the knowledge for all sorts of subjects. Uh, my uh, this discussion is not only for uh, the people who are in science but is also for the people who are working in arts in any kind of subject because it's exploration of nature or to bringing the comforts of life is the duty of all of us jointly to explore this nature and all the sorts of subjects they fall uh, in this category. Selecting a topic of research is very important and the first thing for any researcher to do. There are two main characters which uh, helps you to narrow down to your topic of research. The first is your aptitude. Like some students they go for science, other goes go for art subjects uh, right in the high school and then later on some go for the pre-medical, pre-engineering, mathematics side or some go for the computer sciences. So a sort of aptitude is going on over there. Uh, although there are some sorts of other pressures are also there, society pressure that uh, uh, someone's parents uh, they want to put it into that you should go for doctor or something. But uh, eventually it's the aptitude uh, that narrows down uh, your research capabilities. And the second important thing which is also very important is the facilities available. So of course you don't have to uh, burn the fire from stones. But uh, based on your aptitude and facilities available, you have to search the topic uh, at some authentic websites. So facilities means if you are a student and you are going uh, doing research under your supervisor, so it depends on what kind of research he is doing. Of course, he will be interested in the broader, broader category uh, of research. And similarly, if you are some faculty who want to do research uh, at your initial career then you have to define yourself to which side you want to go depending on the available facilities you have and similarly uh, for the uh, people uh, for the senior researchers even them it depends many times on the need of the country need of the society that they want to do research in particular area but to further uh, narrow down the topic of research you have to do search and on some authentic websites what's going on around and such as PubMed, Google Scholar, digital libraries from your institution and these are uh, PubMed especially for the biological sciences but I, I, I have mentioned 
as I have mentioned, my this discussion is not only for biological but for all sorts of research, including social sciences and arts as well. Two broad categories of research are survey or observational research or thematic research. Uh, and the other one is the experimental research, which is performed either in field or in uh, some laboratory. And uh, it may be applied or basic. Now, as I mentioned earlier, to select the topic of research, you first have to have some uh, basic idea that what's going on in the field of your interest. So for that, you have to go for some authentic websites or such as PubMed for the biological sciences and Google Scholar is for the general one. And you can also use digital libraries uh, where all sorts of research uh, engines are there so you can narrow down your topic of research and I have taken one example of that how you can apply your search uh, like isolation of antibacterial compounds from plants but you can apply uh, this procedure to any type of research as I mentioned earlier so what you have to do is you have some tentative title or you have some keywords and you put those keywords or tentative title in your search engine or the website and go for search. What you get is you get a number of different titles of the research papers and review articles which people have publish, published in the last few years. And from that, you have to narrow it down that what question uh, is to be answered. like after getting these titles you go for further selection you go down with that and because it is very simple to do that when you do it you will know that uh, you it is uh, uh, obvious that you get such uh, search uh, possibilities and you after getting many titles for example you have gotten about uh, 100 titles then what you do is you go for the abstracts so you just click on the abstracts of the titles uh, which you are in, interested in. Of course, you won't be interested in all of those. So you select those and you hit the abstract. Then you read the abstract and you further narrow down. And then you go for the full length research paper. But it's better to have review articles at this uh, stage because review article is written uh, in which the comparison of the research in the last few years uh, is done by uh, the researchers and by the authors. And in that review article, you can find which questions are uh, still to be answered. And how you get those review articles and uh, research papers, either you can buy those from the websites, but as I mentioned, uh, there are freely available uh, open access journals uh, or through the digital libraries of your institutions uh, who pay for that. You can have uh, free access to these research papers and review articles. Either you go from the your digital libraries of your institution or you go for some open access uh, journal. So uh, along with the abstract, if you're interested that this abstract uh, is maybe of a good one, then you hit here, get the free PDF of the research paper. And if it is freely available, of course, it will be downloaded and you can read it further. Uh, but uh, only if uh, it is a free access or if it is uh, through digital libraries. Otherwise, you may have to buy it. Uh, but uh, I hope that you will get the free access to most of those. And uh, as I mentioned, that latest review articles are the most important ones, and especially you read uh, their conclusion and that uh, what is the missing question, what the, they have, some questions are uh, left unanswered by the authors based on their uh, review uh, of the research for the last few years. And remember, you get the latest review article in your area. And then, of course, if you are a student, you have to discuss with your supervisor or advisor. Or if you are a, some junior faculty, you may discuss with your senior faculty. 
or if you are a senior faculty then you can decide uh, depending on the need uh, of the uh, society or need of the some institution that what kind of research you are looking for but uh, uh, message to the supervisors and advisors is that you must not spoon feed uh, your students even for the senior faculty you just give the guidance and they do all the work and they bring up that work to you and it's not uh, your duty that you do everything and say hey you go on this research it's, it's not that way you just give them an overall guidance and they will come up with the uh, research uh, question now that you have narrowed down your question for out of those review articles and data search now you have to organize your data you will get three types of data abstracts in the form of research papers and in the form of review articles and this is very important before moving forward that you do this uh, data organization and then you have to perform in-depth data search as I mentioned next now you have a certain question to be asked and you have to look for the answer to that question on the on the basis of which you want to do your research so you have to do in-depth data search and this is exactly in the similar way as you did earlier to narrow down your research area but different difference is that here you go for more uh, number of abstracts and research articles and review articles and here you are more focused because you already have narrowed down your uh, research project and you just have to now collect the data in your area of interest so you do similar type of research as I mentioned earlier and you make this data table this data table will help you not only in writing the synopsis but also for the thesis or if you are doing some research uh, like a research project you it will uh, also help you to design a research project and then uh, it will also help to write down the research reports so it is looks very simple but very important so uh, here there are three types of uh, uh, data resources you can categorize those as like abstracts a1 a2 a3 and so forth and similarly for research papers you can rp1 rp2 or review articles i just given just one example you can give your own coding here and then you have to put salient points that i will show you in a minute how you uh, give these and then reference for the for this source you have to give it over here and this data if you make this data uh, it means uh, more than 50 percent of your report or synopsis or project or thesis is already written if you have this data table uh, so important it is for synopsis you need uh, about two to three review articles about this there is no fixed thing but i just give you an example because it varies in different subjects and different types of research but this is a, uh, just for an indication if for thesis or for research report or research project you can you can uh, have uh, such kind of research uh, resource available with you now as i mentioned it's very important to organize your data this is the most important part of it here you have to read the source after having copies you can read it at the hard copy or you can do it in the soft whatever you like uh, you may do reading at any convenient time but the main thing is it should be with full focus and concentration because what you have to do is you have to underline the salient points or highlight those on the source we don't want here neat and clean research papers and review articles and abstracts you should uh, write the points on the source as you can see over here you should highlight those or you can underline those what are the important and this can only be done if you do it with full focus and concentration and do end up with something like this that 
this for example there is an abstract one and you when you read it you put the salient points on the source and also you put the same points here so from one abstract usually you get uh, maybe three to four salient points or maybe less in research paper you may get seven eight or or so and similarly for the review article you may get a little more like 14 to 15 you don't have to write everything over here just write down the salient points because we will you we are going to use this table later on to write any sorts of report research uh, thesis or synopsis and of course you have to put the reference here uh, just a short reference so that when you whenever you need and you go this to this table you can easily pull out of your of your resource that what abstract review article or research paper you are looking for if you are putting not only the serial number but also the reference is also important in this and uh, now uh, in my next uh, uh, videos i will discuss after having narrowed down your project you conceived your idea and you have selected your topic and you have enough data and you have made this data table by organizing the data now you are ready to write your synopsis and then to the thesis uh, thank you very much